This is section 1.1 in the textbook, Four Ways of Representing a Function. Everybody knows what a function is, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Here's one way of uh, describing a function. A function is a rule that assigns to each element in a set D exactly one element in a set E. Okay, that's kind of obtuse, but hopefully it'll get clearer as we go along. Basically, a function is a rule. It tells you how to get from one thing to another thing. Usually our input, the element in the set D, is called x, and our function is given a name, often f, because f of x is traditional. So our function is called f, our input element in the set D is called x, and then when you put x into the function f, or you use the function f as a rule to do something to x, what you produce is the output f of x. Okay, so f is the name of the function, f of x is the result of doing the function 2x. We also have a name for d that's set with all the inputs, that's called the domain. Um, E may or may not be the set of all the outputs. It might have some extra stuff in there. The set of all the outputs is called the range, or sometimes the codomain, or sometimes the image. It's less important for us than the domain will be. Okay, so the idea is we have an input x, f does something to it, and it produces the output f of x. In calculus, D and E, that is the inputs and outputs and etc., are usually numbers, real numbers. Um, but they don't have to be, they can be almost anything. There are four basic ways of describing what a function does. The first is verbally. Here's an example. Each student is assigned a grade based on the percentage of correct answers. That sounds reasonably fair. It also describes pretty clearly what this function does. You give me a student, and I will assign them a grade. So the student is the input, and the grades are the output. That is, the domain of this function, D, is all the students in my class, and the outputs, E, are the different grades they can get. Notice two different students can get the same grade, and that's perfectly allowed with a function. You aren't allowed to have one student get two different grades, though. One input can't give you two different outputs, but two different inputs can give you the same output. That's fine. Another way of describing a function is numerically, or with a table. It would look something like this. Hey, here's my list of x values, and with each x value I tell you what its associated f of x value is. So the input 1 gives me the output 15, the input 2.3 gives me the output pi, and so on. Uh, we don't use these a lot except as a sort of intermediate tool in drawing a graph sometimes. Uh, if you have an algebraic expression, you make a table like this of enough values that you think you can sort of tell what the graph is going to look like. Speaking of graphs, we can represent a function with a graph visually. Okay. Everybody knows the vertical axis is the y-axis, and the horizontal axis is the x-axis. That's, of course, if your variables are x and y. Sometimes they're named different things. Um, x is going to be inputs, and y is going to be outputs. So when we draw something like this, it usually gets labeled y equals f of x. That means the y value, the vertical uh, value, is the output based on the input being the x value. That means every point on that little graph I could draw has an x value, and then if you put that x into f, you get the y value of that point. So the coordinates of this point are x, f of x. So every point on the graph is a pair of values x, y that represent the input and the output for that particular input, x and f of x, 7 and f of 7. 12 and f of 12, 0, f of 0. That is, if you look for the x value 4, the y value that goes with it will tell you what f of 4 is. This is the way the graph of a function is defined. And finally, I referred to it before, but functions can be represented algebraically. 
with a formula. Something like f of x equals x squared minus 1, or anything you can imagine algebraically. Um, again, this requires numbers for your inputs and outputs. Like, it would be hard to give a formula, an algebraic formula, for the grade a student's going to get in the class. That is, if the input is Susan, I can't give you a formula, Susan squared minus 15 plus 4 sine of Susan. But for numbers, it works fine. Okay, so those are the four ways of representing a function. Here are some questions you get to answer to let me know that you watched the video. What are the four ways of representing a function? The wonderful thing about videos is you can go back and rewind and watch again if you've already forgotten. Number two, what is the domain of a function? What does that word mean? Okay, so write those down. Write down your answers on a piece of paper, put your name on it, and bring it to class. Turn it in when I ask for the video questions. I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.